Yo, what's up everybody? It's your boy Floss back again with another video and today we're gonna do the real review of the Blackberry Key 1 Now I'm gonna start off by answering the main question everybody been asking me all week should you buy this phone? Well, let me explain it to you like this if you're looking for the thinnest and lightest phone out do not buy this phone if you're looking for the smoothest lag-free Android experience do not buy this phone if you're looking for a phone with a big screen quad HD display beautiful viewing angles in the daytime do not buy this phone if you're looking for a phone to do heavy media heavy gaming do not buy this phone if you're looking for a phone to have a lot of fun have all the new features all little gimmicky tricks do not buy this phone so basically why would you buy this phone if you're looking for a phone that has the highest level of security this is it and if you want a phone that has the best keyboard out right now there's nothing touching this. Now, just like any other phone that I review, there's always gonna be some things that I don't like, so let's talk about that first. Number one, the phone is not water resistant. Now, you're not talking about a $200 phone, this is over 500 bucks. Now, in my opinion, any phone that's over 500 bucks should be water resistant. Check out all the new phones coming out right now, Apple, HTC, Samsung, all of the phones are water resistant. Now, on a side note, I get the same comment all the time. People say, look, I dropped my phone in the toilet and it still works, so it's water resistant. No, all that means is you got lucky. Water resistant means you could put your phone underwater for more than 20, 30 minutes, take it out, and it's still gonna work. So for me, if I'm paying over 500 bucks, I like that little bit of extra security. Now you might not care until you have to replace a phone for water damage, then you're gonna care. Next, no wireless charge. Now, some people don't think it's a big deal, but for me, that's a big deal. Now, if you never had a phone with wireless well, wireless charge, you're not gonna care. But if you got OCD like me, and you hate seeing wires all over the place, or you got a fancy desktop setup, then you're gonna want that wireless charge. And again, for over 500 bucks, I think that's a mandatory feature that should be in all new phones. Next, no removable battery. Now, we'll talk about the battery on this phone in a minute because the battery is insane. But this is basically marketed as a business phone. So if you're running a business and this is your business phone, you want a removable battery. Imagine you somewhere, now business people travel a lot. So imagine you somewhere with your business phone with a dead battery. That's unacceptable. That's why right now the LG V20, that's still my main business phone because I got four batteries. So no matter where I'm at, I'm always gonna have a 100% charged phone. So they should have did that with this one. Next, now this has to do with the camera. There's no optical image stabilization. Now, even on the video, that's not really the biggest deal, but when you're taking pictures, if you got a little shaky hand or you're taking pictures from a moving car, the picture's gonna come out blurry. Now, I've been using this phone for maybe two weeks now, a little bit over a week, maybe two weeks. Been getting a lot of blurry photos. And another thing about the camera, it takes forever to focus. Now, you could turn that feature off. There's a, I'll show you how to do that in a minute. You could turn that off, but when it's on and you want to use that autofocus, this takes a long time, way too long. And um, one more thing with the camera, low light photos, not the best. Not the best at all. Next, the display. Now we talked about that in the unboxing. The display is not that bright. Now a lot of people was like, oh, turn off adaptive display. I'm like, bro, this is not my first Android phone. Of course I turned off adaptive display, but this phone is just not that bright. And I'm gonna show y'all something real quick. When to take it to my settings. Let me open this up. This is how my, my brightness stays on the majority of the time. Max. Viewing angles and direct sunlight not happening. You're gonna have to use max brightness and all that does is kill your battery faster. Now, of course, it's not a quad HD display and maybe my eyes are trained to the Samsung phones and all these new phones out. But when you look at this one, it just looks a little bit more dull. And again, when you're in that bright sunlight, you're gonna have to turn this up to max. Next, no dual speakers. Now the speaker on this phone is banging, but this is the type of shit I hate. When you got the dual speaker grills on the bottom, why not put two speakers or if anything, put one speaker in the top. Put one speaker right in the top in the earpiece and one in the bottom. HCC, Apple, everybody's doing it. Why not do it? I don't understand it. Next, the keyboard. 
Now, this is the best keyboard out, but it should have been a little bit bigger because keep in mind, this is not a media phone. They're not selling it for that. All right, this, the display is already small, so you already know this is not a media beast. One of the major selling points of this phone is the keyboard. So why not take these capacitive buttons, put them at the bottom, make the keyboard a little bit higher. Make it a little bit higher because if you got big fingers, you're gonna notice that you're typing with the tips of your fingers and you're gonna get that thumb fatigue. We'll talk about that in a minute too. So the keyboard should have been a little bit bigger. Now, the last thing about this phone that I don't like, which is the number one thing, the most important thing, which is almost a deal breaker for me, the lag. Right, the lag factor on this phone is ridiculous. This phone has a lot of lag. <laughs> That's the only way I can say it. This phone has a lot of lag. If you're looking for smoothest, not a smoothest, the smoothest. All right, if you're looking for the smoothest Android experience, this ain't it. It's still a Google Pixel. It's not the Galaxies. Maybe HCC and Motorola might be second, but this is not even in the top five. This phone lags a lot. Now this is a productivity phone. So you're gonna have a lot of apps open at the same time. The phone is gonna start stuttering. When you open up certain apps, it takes a long time. When you're setting keys or you're doing your, your predictive search, sometimes it lags out. Now, of course, it ain't gonna lag because I'm doing the video. But like I said, this phone, ask anybody, you know, don't just take my word for it. Do some research. I don't know, this phone just has a lot of lag. You're gonna have to be vigilant. You're gonna have to keep going to your recently used apps and clearing everything to get it to run a little bit smoother. Now there's other settings you could go to and disable this, disable that. One of the settings that uh, that really take up a lot of RAM is the BlackBerry Hub. But what good is having a BlackBerry with the BlackBerry Hub disabled? That makes no sense. Anyway, so that's everything that I don't like. Now on a side note, I'm a little bit under the weather so I'm gonna have to pause the video real quick to clear out the snot bubbles. I'll be right back. Now, let's talk about everything that I do like. Number one, the price. 550 bucks for what you're getting. The price is right. Now, you're not getting the top of the line specs. You don't have all of the top of the line new features, but BlackBerry is not charging the top of the line price, so we can't really complain about that. Next, build quality. Now, this is one of the things that I love about this phone the most, the build. Super thick, super heavy, giggity. That finish on the back, this phone feels so good in the hands, ladies. And this right here, that BlackBerry insignia on the back. Now, a lot of y'all young cats, that don't really mean nothing. But if you came up in the BlackBerry era, you remember this symbol. As soon as you see it, it just screams class and it screams business. And when you hold this phone, you're going to feel like a boss. All right, so that's the next thing I like about it. Build quality, top of the line. Next, fingerprint sensor. This has to be one of the top five fastest fingerprint sensors out. Now look, it's 97 degrees here, so I'm back here sweating like crazy. Let's see if we can still get this to work as fast. Look how fast that is. No complaints there, fingerprint sensors a go. And you also have these two little LEDs in it that light up. Let me see if I can show you that real quick. You see the LEDs pulsating? So that's a nice touch. Fingerprint sensors a go. Next. The convenience key. Now my only gripe with the convenience key, as much as I like it, it should have been on this side or maybe somewhere. I keep pressing this, thinking it's the power button. I don't know, maybe maybe I just gotta get the hang of it a little bit more. But the convenience key is definitely a go. I still got mine set to flashlight, but you can program it to whatever you want. But I love that feature right there. Next, Blackberry Hub. Now check this out. Now also, one thing I wanna mention with the widgets, you see those dots underneath? That means you can flick it open. BlackBerry Hub, this is a dope app right here and a dope integration for BlackBerry. Basically what it is, all your notifications in chronological order from every app. So I got YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, all of my messages will come up in order from the same app. Let me, let me show y'all this, you see? Got YouTube, Instagram. Now when you click on it, it's not gonna be an actual message, it's just gonna take you to the Instagram app. But I'm feeling it. So BlackBerry Hub is a go. Now keep in mind, this is a productivity, business oriented phone. So you're gonna wanna just one quick glance and see all your emails in chronological order. So I like that. Next, now you got the productivity tab, 
This is similar to the Galaxy. <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all. I'm a little bit under the weather. Y'all know the Galaxy uh, swipe tab on the side? Same thing. So you got your calendar. Here's all my messages again. You got your task. You got your recent, your, your most used contacts. And of course, you could take it to settings. You could change the position. And you could change the height and the transparency and the permissions. Basically the same as on the Galaxy phones, just integrated into BlackBerry. All right, so I like that. Next. Shortcut keys. Now you got 52 of those. Now basically, I haven't had time to sit back and program all of them, but I did a few, so if I just tap on the letter I, that's gonna open up my Instagram. If I tap on the letter Y, that should take me to YouTube Music. If I just tap on G, it'll take me to Google. And you can set up, you can set them up for one tap or long press. So now if I have I for Instagram, if I do long press, I can set it to something else. So shortcut keys, that's a must on a phone that has a keyboard. And BlackBerry did it right on this one. Next, the camera. Now, a lot of people say it's the same camera from the Pixel. That's not true. Spec-wise, it might be the same camera, but it doesn't operate the same. I got a Pixel right here on deck. Took some side-by-side -side shots. Pixel does better on low light. Now, with that being said, this phone does take beautiful pictures, which you wouldn't expect from a BlackBerry. Let me show y'all a picture I took real quick. Check out the white shoe. Shout out to White Shoes, she got the day off. Pictures look great in the daytime, just not the best in low light, and no optical image stabilization, so if you got shaky hands or you're taking pictures from a moving vehicle, you're gonna have a rough ride. Now, as far as the camera app itself, pretty much stock, pretty much basic. You do have your Instagram filters. You got a few different modes. You got photo, panoramic, video, and slow motion. Now, one thing that does suck if you want to go to manual mode, you got to go into settings and you got to switch it from here. Should have had a little tab, but it is what it is. Basic settings though, nothing to really complain about. This is a BlackBerry, so a good camera on a BlackBerry phone, that's a first. So shout out to BlackBerry, they did that right too. Next, the speaker. Now this is a mono speaker phone, but the speaker on this is super loud. Let me pull up a video real quick. All right, check this out. Listen to this. You can actually feel the phone vibrating a little bit with the bass. Now imagine if they had another speaker on the top. This would be dope. But it's nice and loud though. You're not going to have no problem with the speaker. And you're not going to have no problem getting your notifications. It's super loud. Now the display. Not the biggest in the world. This is how it's gonna look when you're watching YouTube videos. Now, certain apps, you're gonna get letterboxing. That's bad enough, but letterboxing on a small screen, it's even worse. But it does look nice and clear. That speaker is crazy though. All right, so I'm definitely feeling the speaker. Next, now, we get into the good stuff. The battery. The battery life on this phone is incredible. Now this gotta be one of the best batteries I used in a long time. I literally got six hours of screen on time. Now this is not with my max brightness, this is inside. Low level brightness, six hours of on screen time. That's incredible. But the best part about this phone is the standby time. The standby time on this is ridiculous. Not ridiculous, take out the U, ridiculous. Now you can leave this on your desktop for three days straight. Three days straight. Now I've been using this phone, I wanna say, I wanna say almost two weeks. I really only charge it maybe three or four times. This is a certified battery beast. Now if you're buying this as your backup phone or your trap phone, your stash phone that you wanna leave in the car, charge this up on Monday, charge it up again on Wednesday, charge it up again on Saturday. Now it also has our quick charge 3.0, so even when you do charge it, it charges fast. So now if you're using this all day at work, your battery might go down to, like mine's is right now, nine o'clock at night, 62%, charge it up for 30 minutes, back on 100. I could charge it up again in a couple of days if I don't use it. So battery life, major, major win. Now, next, security. Now if you're into, uh, if you're into security, which you probably are if you're buying this phone, this is the most secure phone out right now. Now you got your D-Tech. This is gonna show you everything that's running. I got all greens. Only one is my screen lock because it's just a straight up L, but it is what it is. But my device protection is excellent. 
Now, if you're buying this for a business phone and you're making thousand dollar transactions all day long, you're gonna want that added security. That's why you're gonna get a BlackBerry. BlackBerry has always been on top of the food chain in the security department and ain't nothing changed. All right, so security, made you go. Now, the keyboard. Basically, that's gonna be one of the reasons why you're buying this phone is for this keyboard. This keyboard is just so insane, but I gotta keep it real with y'all. I gotta keep it real with y'all. I love the keyboard, but I can't go back to typing on keyboards. Let me show you something. Now, I'll pull up an email. I just gotta keep it on it with y'all. I love the keyboard, but it's just not its just not for me. Now, when I did the real uh, the unboxing, you notice you got your physical keyboard and your on-screen keyboard. Now, you could disable this if you want and just have more screen and just force yourself to use the physical keyboard. But me, I like to leave this one on because I'm in the car a lot of the day, uh, a lot of the time during the day. So when my phone is in the car, on the car charger, if I want to send a message, I can just use one finger swipe. Now you're not going to be able to type with one finger on this. Trust me, because you can't do shift and a another key with one finger. So if you got your phone on a car mount or on the desktop char uh, desktop dock, you're not going to be able to use one finger. So the dual screen keyboards, that's a good look, but you can turn it off if you want. Now. As much as I love Blackboard, uh, BlackBerry keyboards, I know I'm a little under the weather, y'all bear with me. As much as I love BlackBerry keyboards. Now, a lot of people, this is what kills me too. A lot of people was like, when I was you know, doing my little demos like this, oh, you don't really know how to use Blackberries. Look at some of my old videos, like right, the Blackberry Bold 9930. That was my favorite Blackberry of all times, but I had, I had all of them. There was a time, if you would have seen me, maybe seven, eight years ago, I used to walk around with three Blackberries three Blackberries and a Nextel. So Blackberry is nothing new to me. I used to be on crackberry.com all of the time. The main reason I stopped using Blackberries was because of the lack of apps. Now, a lot of people stopped using Blackberry because of the same reason. Soon as Instagram came out and a lot of other apps came out, Blackberry started to get phased out because they didn't have enough apps. Then y'all remember Blackberry, they, was, uh, they started talking about having an Android Blackberry phone and it was all talk, but by the time it finally came to fruition, everybody already got rid of their Blackberries. Now for me, BBM, that, that was the big deal. Remember if you met somebody and they didn't have BBM, you was looking at them kind of like a peasant. Now BBM is basically a done deal. Now I had this phone for about two weeks. I haven't met anybody yet that has a, BB, uh, a Blackberry or BBM. So I haven't even had a chance to really test it out yet because nobody uses that. But the keyboard, back to the keyboard, it's, it's, it's just not for me. Now, I try, to, I try to use it all day, every day to try to get my muscle memory back, but it seems like you gotta press the button. So it seems like it's harder to type because you're physically pressing buttons. Now, if you type in, hey, what time are you gonna be ready? Hey, let's go have a drink. You know, quick, quick shit real quick, no problem. But try typing out long emails, maybe 20, 30 straight, or you're getting into a big argument and you're going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. After a while, you're gonna get thumb fatigue. So I found myself using my swipe keyboard or I found myself doing this all of the time. Like I was opening up, I was going on this right here, like Google, and I would type a little bit. I'll start typing an email or whatever I'm doing and then immediately start typing up here. So basically, if you're not gonna use the keyboard, then it doesn't make any sense getting this phone. But I'm sorry, I tried. I gave it the old college try, but it's just not for me. It just feels, it just feels a little outdated. Maybe my body is too trained to using swipe and using on-screen keyboards. It just feels like it's easy. Your thumbs are just tapping on the screen. This you're like physically typing, physically typing. So I don't know, it's the best keyboard out, but it ain't for me. Definitely not for me. Now, what about the lag factor? We gotta talk about that real quick. The lag factor on this phone, it's there. <laughs> the lag factor is definitely there. If anybody said they got a BlackBerry, uh, a BlackBerry Key One with no lag, they lying. All right, this phone, way too much lag. Now, of course, Snapdragon 635, you don't, you don't expect it to be the smoothest phone out, but no quad HD display. All right, so we took a hit with that. Lot, no no real gimmicky features, you took a hit with that. Small screen, took a hit with that. The least thing that you want is no lag. So you can't be taking all those hits and then having to deal with lag on top of that. Now you got a Galaxy S8, you'll take that little bit of lag because you got the iris sensor, you got that big giant display, you got all the new features. 
So I don't mind a little lag here and there. Something like this, a little bit of lag, okay, but a lot of lag, that's a no-go. Right, this phone got way too much lag for me. Now, last but not least, the floss factor. Now, if you don't know what the floss factor is, just go watch one of my other real reviews. We don't have to get into all of that. What's the floss factor on this phone? I would say it's pretty high if you're into the business game because business people, they know that symbol. If you're old school cat, pretty high. Blackberry still, Blackberry still has a certain nostalgic purpose to a lot of people. But if you pull this phone out in today's world and somebody comes out with the LG G6 or this Galaxy S8, iPhone 7, you're not really shutting them down. All right, they basically gonna look at you like some old school dude or they or they're gonna look at you as a business person. So when you're buying this phone, you're not really buying it for the floss factor, but it does have a little bit of floss factor because it's a Blackberry. Now, if you're over 30 years old, you know what a Blackberry is, y'all young cats. Just do a little research and realize why us old school cats, we like Blackberry so much. But if it was up to me, this phone, they should have put the, I, I'd rather pay, I'd rather, honestly, I'd rather pay 700 bucks, give me the top of the line processor, make this keyboard a little bit bigger, give me the dual speakers, make it water resistant. This could have been a home run. Now, and that's the thing, that's the thing. When you got companies like Blackberry, companies like HTC, that just had a, had a flop, because the Blackberry Priv, I don't care what y'all say, that was trash. All right, that slide out keyboard, slide out keyboard, you might as well get a, a, a sidekick. Go get a T-Mobile sidekick if you wanna use slide out keyboards. That's a complete done deal. Blackberry was basically one foot in the grave. This was supposed to be their return. They could have came out, they could have came out so hard. And that, that's what kills me. Now, HCC, we got the HCC 11 coming in a couple of days. We're going to get into that. But y'all see the last HCC phone. When you got one foot in the grave, what you want to do is come back out full throttle. Look at LG. With this LG G6, now, if you had the LG G5, it was pretty ugly. You know, they, I, I give them credit. They tried to be innovative with the modular design and all that. But they basically, that was one foot in the grave for the LG G series. So what did they do? They said, okay, we're going to come back out hard wire or well, wireless charging water resistant glass back panel this is how you do it when you when you're about to die and you're on life support this is how you do it blackberry the effort is there but they should have charged maybe 800 bucks now that's a lot but people that like blackberries would have paid that 800 bucks to have top of the line features all of the new specs on a blackberry so overall, my opinion, should you get this phone? If you're a businessman and you love Blackberries, get this phone. If you need a keyboard, get this phone. Other than that, you better off getting a Galaxy, iPhone, even, even a Huawei. Get yourself a Huawei Mate 9 or a P10. Get an LG V20. This right here, this keyboard, this keyboard, if you don't really use it, the keyboard gimmick is gonna get, get old fast. It's gonna get old real fast. I'm already tired of it, and which I thought I would never say, but I'm already tired of it. I can't even use it anymore. But it is what it is. Shout out to everybody rocking with me on Facebook, Foursquare, Twitter, Google Plus. Shout out to all the Google gangsters. I see y'all holding down that Facebook page. Shout out to everybody hitting me up on Foxer. And a special shout out to everybody rocking with me on Instagram. Y'all know that's where I'm at full time, 100% full throttle. And a special shout out to everybody rocking with the new stream on Sundays. Y'all already know, stream gangsters on deck. Get your drinks ready. No meat boys a lot. Oh yeah, special shout out to everybody following me on Snapchat. Flossy underscore Carter, that's where I'm at. And a special shout out to the notification squad. I see y'all in the comment section early. Hashtag salute. Oh yeah, one more thing. I almost forgot. Fellas, ladies, say it with me. All y'all haters, all y'all trolls, close your eyes and picture me rolling. It's your boy Floss, I'm out. Deuces. Spock won the beam up. Energize.